Bury Football Club. They were thrown out. They were thrown out. They were thrown out. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Dead and Bury. I'm your host, Captain Bernie Man FM, and I welcome you to this Football Manager 20 save where I take Bury AFC all the way back to the promised land that is the Football League and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now into season number three. We've had a summer and we've had three promotions. Oh, sorry, two promotions. This is our third season. We're aiming for a third promotion in a row. And we're now in the Northern Premier League division. That is one division below the Vanarama North. So we're very, very getting closer and closer to those national leagues. And then we're only one step away from getting to the Football League. Yes, it is in sight, ladies and gentlemen. And like I said, today's episode is the first one of season number three. And we've had a summer, we've had us transfers, we've brought new players in, we've got rid of a few. We've even started the league very, very... We've only had a couple of games, but we've started it. And I'm going to show you how we've been getting on in a little while. But let's go and have a look at the new transfers and at the squad that we've got for this season's promotion charge. Come on, the boys. Just looking at the outs, and we haven't really sold anyone for a free transfer or for any money, really. Apart from a quadram Marina has got to spend more on a free transfer. He was the striker that we just never really ever played. Let's just have a quick look on... The release players, and I think that might bring you a little bit more of an idea of actually who we've got rid of. So Gary McCabe has retired. Also, Sylvan Ebanks Blake has hung up his boots as well. He did it before the end of last season. There he is, a coach now. Do I bring him in? Probably not, because <laughs> he's not. He's not too bad, I suppose. But yeah, for what we need him for as a coach, he's absolutely rubbish. He's good at working with kids, but that's about it. Gary McCabe also retired as well at the age of 33, didn't play much, but in that one season that we did bring him in, he was an absolute superstar in our first year. And the rest are all gone on free transfers, so Rasmus Johansson has gone. Anyone else that jumps out of the page that, oh, Mr. Alex Honeyball has also gone on a free transfer as well. He hasn't been picked up by anyone, which is a surprise in itself, because he's an absolute steal for any team down in this lower ends of football what a player the honeyball was. Thank you for your service, Alex Ladd. Petr Cech has also left as well. Still getting under-21 caps for Czech Republic. Couldn't get a game for us. Absolutely terrible. Makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And last but not least, I will let you know, and he has actually found a club. It's Robbie Laird. Yeah, the Laird. The Laird has gone. He um, yeah, didn't play much last season. and uh, But in the first season, had an absolute storm for us. Last season, only made four appearances. Didn't really get much of a game. We need better players now these days. But thank you again for your services. Just like the Honeyball, what a superstar it was in that first season. But we are now on to the ins. And as you can see, we've made some signings. Not loads, not absolutely loads, but crucial players that come in to those positions that we just needed to strengthen up on. Now we have gone into another level of football. And the first one is a central midfielder slash attacking midfielder, Eliman Ndai. And we picked him up from Sheffield United after he was released from his contract. And he is a two and a half star current ability potential to go through the roof. Determination 16. That's the first attribution I always look at when I'm thinking about players at this level. They need determination and they also just need a bit of good hard work. So nine at this level is not too bad. Leadership 11, he's got good, good attributions for an individual and then the rest will just come as he's a footballer and no one's very good at this level anyway. But I'm very happy with what we've brought in. Senegalese, no international, which is a very, very shock. Not even an under-20 international for them. But he's our new central midfielder and he's sitting and slotting in very, very nicely. Welcome to the club, Mr. Earlyman Ndai. Under 20, Northern Ireland International, that's right, Mark McGuinness, central defender. And with a name like Mark McGuinness, I feel like he's just going to be some sort of like bulldozing central defender. Very much an English, not English, <laughs> British central back. So his personality, fairly ambitious, which was fantastic. And then he's jumping reach 19, strength 16 for the 20-year-old, determination 12, work rate 9, tackling 11, heading 17. You ain't getting past the ball. That is Mark McGuinness. That's right. I've already given him a nickname. Picked him up from Arsenal after he was released from his contract. 
already played two games for us, sitting in at the centre back. He is the replacement for Alex Honeyball, and he is doing an absolute fine job for us. Welcome to the club, Mr. Mark McGuinness. Right, I brought this lad back, Rob Arker, and if you are a Bury fan before AFC Bury, obviously the old Bury, then this is a kid that was sold by Bury to a bigger club when he was a youngster. That's right. I've taken over Bury as a club. So when it says Bury back in 2017-2016 kind of thing, it is Bury, the old Bury. Not AFC Bury, but we are AFC Bury, if that makes sense. He was sold on a free transfer to Bur uh, to Burnley, just up the road. He hasn't played a single game for Burnley, and we picked him back up after he's lost his contract. So an uh, old boy, an old Bury boy has come back to the club to help us through this time and he has hit the ground running he isn't starting for us but he's scored two off the bench already for us this season and i'm very happy with what we've got look at those attributions for this level though very very good for a poacher finisher 12 decision making 13 off the ball 13 he'll do for me welcome to the club mr rob arker hey yes i went for the name Big name. He's the backup to Dal on that left-hand side, but Rafael Garcia is the man. <laughs> what a name, yeah? I mean, in the world of football, if if you want if you want some flair and some and, and something about you, then you just don't look any further than Rafael Garcia. I can imagine he has the locks of pure beauty. He is the Gina Sequa of the footballing world, and he is the David Ginola. That's all I can see is David Ginola when I think of Rafael Garcia. Portuguese, 18-year-old, capped at under-19 level. We picked him up from Everton. They picked him up from Fulham on the game as well. He has come off the bench one game for us. He is very much our backup. He's just very fast. That's what we've got him for. He's got some nice flair, good determination. Like I said, most everyone I pick up has got good determination. And he'll do a fine job for us off the bench. Welcome to the club, Mr. Rafael Garcia. We needed a new right midfielder and we couldn't find one, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. But fellow Asgard, and Asgard, I'm sure that's a four. But yeah, <laughs> we'll stick with it. It's either a four or a, a, Avengers. I'm not the biggest fan of them all, so please just let me know if I'm getting that right or if I'm getting that wrong. But anyway, he is a under-21 Norwegian international fellow Asgard. And we picked him up from Wigan Athletic last season. He spent a full season at Leamington Spa in Vanarama North and did a decent job for over 6.91. So to come down a further league to us, I think he will do a great, great job for us. Um, first touch 13, determination 12, flair 16. He's got a lot of improvement to do, but we just needed a right side of midfielder. We've got Johnson getting out still, but he hasn't developed into the player that we were hoping for. So them two will just swap and change throughout the season. We've got him as a squad player, and I'm very happy to have him on board. Welcome to the club, Mr. Fellow Asgard. New goalkeeper, Vitaslev Yaros. Right, we signed this player as a backup to our goalkeeper, which was Paul Woolston. Since arriving, he has actually taken over the number one jersey and hasn't conceded a goal. But actually, you know, he has conceded one goal so far in two games. But I'm very happy with what we've actually pulled out of the bag here. 14 reflexes out of 20. 13 out of 20 handling uh, passing 13 because we've got a he is a sweeper keeper so he's got to be good at that command of area 11 again sweeper keepers have got to have that bravery 13 determination 13 decision making 14 concentration 11 uh, positioning 11 all of that stuff for a goalkeeper at this level ah, perfect perfect stuff and he is battling for that first team spot with the Paul Woolston who came in at the end of last season. Liverpool paid £300,000 for him once upon a time from Slavia Park and we picked him up on a free transfer this season so I'm very happy to have Vitislav Yaros on board. Welcome. And last but not least, a backup centre midfielder, Harry Cullinan. We picked him up from Norwich. He is a Irish under-19 international and I picked him up because we needed a central midfielder cover. Sorry, not from Norwich, from Sheffield United. They picked him up from Ireland a couple of seasons ago. He didn't get much of a game for Sheffield United, and he was released out of their contract, and we've picked him up, and we're very happy to have him on board. Again, 16 determination. Not everything else is there, but we just needed some cover for that central midfielder, and I'm happy with what we've got. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the transfers for this season, and if you want to have a quick look at the tactics... We haven't changed a thing. <laughs> We're still doing exactly the same thing. Mentality still on attacking, possession. We're going Gaga press, but we've moulded it into our own possession, own transition, and out of possession. We're keeping it very minimal, very to the point, and we're just going for the win. And things have been looking rather smoothly so far.
So this is how things have been looking since the start of the season. We've only played two league games so far, but pre-season went pretty well. As we got our transfers in, we then got very good. Actually, a big win over Southport. 3-1 was, was the highlight of the pre-season. But we started off the first game of the season at home at Gig Lane against Hyde. One of our local derbies. A lot of local derbies in this, uh, this league this season. A lot of uh, Lancashire teams. So... Not actual derbies, they won't be called anything, they'll just be Lancashire derbies. And it was a 3-0 drubbing of that. Illiman and Dai getting his first goal for the club after 25 minutes and Dal getting two. Oh, he's an absolute superstar at this level these days. Look at him. What a player. He's going to score an absolute bag full already for us this season. He only scored seven in the league last season, but 16 in the overall. So he had a really good cup campaign at the uh, last season as well. But he has been a wanted man over the summer and has decided to stay with the Bury, so I'm very happy to have him on board still. And then we've just played our first away game of the season, and we've just won by three goals to one. This is where Rob Harker came off the bench and scored two for us. That was uh, after Josh Happier got his first goal of the season for us. As you say, the team hasn't changed so much as in personnel. I didn't really want to do that because they were developing into really good players last season, um, so I just kind of brought in some lads that are going to fill into the positions that just needed strengthening it a little bit so as you can see like on on the on this page if you can have a look at our team right here you've still got O'Connor, Arkenhill, Richard Chio, and um, Mbala, Dal, Appia and Tom McKeown all still playing so there's only about three or four positions that have been filled with new players and today leads us on to this game against Scarborough Athletic and the reason I've chosen to play Scarborough Athletic is because at the end of last season which I'm not sure if I actually brought you. I didn't bring you the game live, but we lost by three goals to do in the Indigro League Cup quarter final against them. So I want some revenge. So the revenge shall be served today. Let's go and do it. Scarborough at home. It's the first one of season number three for us on camera. Let's do it. So here we go, first game of the episode, well the only game of the episode today because I've just brought you that extra intro. We also wanted to say as well, we are predicted to come top of the table today, so that is what we're going for. Well not today, for this season and that's what we are going for. Come on then the lads, their manager is a new manager, he's a regen, so no point of showing you who he is. We have got an injury in the midfield though and Diet has picked up, pulled knee ligaments in training and he's out for four weeks, so that is rather rubbish so that leaves us with this formation today we've just changed and die around and brought back in paul sorano who has a very good good partnership with richie chio in the middle so we've got yaros and goal we've got mckinnis o'connor and okonol at the back asgard richie chio sorano and dal on the left hand side nabala apia and tom McKeown, the three amigos up top come on they're going for a four one two three system basically like a four three three with two wide men Will Hannon, I've heard of him before, and he also scored two in that game that beat us last season. So come on, let's go and get the win today, boys. Come on, fear the noise. Yes. Right, pick up where you last left off, says Paul Hooper. Oh, yes. By the way, Callum Bennett is gone, the assistant manager. And then I tried to bring in a new, and we signed this guy called Paul Hooper, who is a regen and absolutely terrible at my at being an assistant manager but my director of football for he was the right person to bring in and we brought in the likes of steve watson ex aston villa newcastle um and everton player and he's our under 21 or under 18 manager it makes absolute zero sense but anyway straight out to the game let's go and do it right first out of the game comes to scarborough athletic though and the ball is headed away and here comes josh appier Appier knocks the ball up for McKeown and wins the header. It's Dal who bursts onto it. And number two, Dal taking it to the right hand side. Can he finish it with his right boot? No, he doesn't. And Taylor makes the save. But first, real indication on how good we are at breaking away on those counter attacks. Asgard wins the ball back. Richie Chio now finds Dal on the left hand side. It's Dal on the ball. Is that a penalty? It is. The referee points to the spot. And it could be our first real big opportunity. Well, it is our first real big opportunity to go 1-0 up. And it's Stefan O'Connor, the central defender, sticks it into the bottom corner. Um, AFC Bury are off to an absolute flat. Stefan O'Connor, by the way, is a wanted man by Wimbledon. And he doesn't want to sign a new contract with us, which is a real, real shitter, if I'm going to be honest with you. But anyway, enough of that. He sticks the ball into the back of there and we are winning before 10 minutes even on the clock. 
nothing's happened since that goal though and it's quite even if I'm going to be honest with you possession wise we are completely in domination 61% possession 63% now but shots wise it is 50-50 um, and there's been no highlights since that goal from us early in the game I am still on attacking this season and maybe if things start going a little bit pear shaped for us we could go back to positive but for now, things are working for us, and I say that as we clear one off the line there, and here comes Dawson again on this uh, left-hand side to Spence, and Spence tries to give the ball to Watson. Watson looks like he's going to go for a shot, but we do close him down, and that's the end of the highlight. But we did get off the line there, so there has been parts today where things have not been going too, too swimmingly for us. Looks like we're going to go to the break here, and we are still winning by one goal to nil, but it has not been a champagne performance from so far. I'm just going to give the lads a little bit of encouragement there and just stick with what Paul the Hoops says at half time for us and go out there and still do. A lot of lads on 6.4s and 6.5s, not the best performance from us. Right, we're coming up to the 60 minute mark now. We're still winning 1 0, so I am a little bit reluctant to kind of change anything just yet. A lot of our players have actually upped their games a little bit this second half. We have kind of taken control with the shots. Um, and here we go, the first real highlight of the second half. Serrano puts it in there. The keeper does pick it out of the air, and Taylor is going to start off. This attack for Scarborough Athletic, but yeah, it's not as swimmingly as we hoped for. Asgar wins the back there, the back there, goes to McGinnis, back to Asgar, goes back to Yaros now in goal. Viteslav at Yaros to O'Connor, O'Connor to Hockenhull. Hockenhull pumps the ball forward for Mikiron, who always wins that header for us. Uh, Richie Chio then to Dal on the left hand side, the, the magic man who can make things happen. Nice little one two, and he works it with Serrano. Serrano to Richie Chio with a lovely ball to Dal. Dal, if we can score, it'd be a great goal, and Josh Happier sticks it into the back of the net. And that is champagne football. I said it after, and that it wasn't a champagne performance, and we have just turned on the style right there and then, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely one twos between the players. Richie Chio to Dal. Dial into the box, and there is Josh Appiah. Yes, he took a deflection, which put, took the shine off it a little bit, but it deserved it. It's his second goal of the season, and that goal could just put the game to bed for us. It is Bury 2. It's Scarborough Athletic nil. And there's a highlight straight away, though, from that goal. And could we really put the put the game to bed now? It's Appiah who's through. Can he make it free? And he does. And it's his third of the season. And Josh Appiah, he is loving life. This season already, just finishing off from last season's successful campaign for us up top. And him and Tom McEwen have continued their partnership fantastically. He puts the ball over the top from Hockenhill and he just finishes it down the middle. And this game is over and out, ladies and gentlemen. 3-0 game set and match. I like straight from the kickoff though. And are we going to continue this onslaught? Or are Scarver going to get one back here and just make it a little bit of a tetchy last 20 minutes? The ball goes into the box, but well, it goes straight at the goalkeeper and he saves it. Just made two subs with only 15 minutes to go. Um, Johnson and Gananfi come on the right side for Asgard and Sasula has come on for Richie Chio in the middle. Just both looking a bit complacent and I just wanted to get some game time for these lads as well. But we're coming into the final 10 minutes now and time is ticking away and it has been a vintage second half performance from AFC Bury and we are sitting top, top, top of the table now on three wins after three games. Here comes Paul Serrano with a free kick, puts it in there. There's a header, he's hit the post, they've got it off the line. Ah, oh, and I thought that was going to be a fourth and I think that was Mark McGuinness with the header. I could be wrong, but the Irishman nearly getting on the score sheet for us. I think the ball is going to just uh, finish off here or are we going to continue with a highlight? Hockenau pumps it forward. McKeown tries to get over, Spence wins it back and here comes Scarborough now trying to break, but McGuinness is there to intercept the ball. So Sula just gives the ball away there. And the ball is kind of just bouncing around here. A little bit uh, pinball football up to Appiah. And the highlight continues. Appiah on this right side. Can he get the ball to the box? It's Sasula who has a strike. And it just dips over the top of the bar. We come into stoppage time. And I think that will be that. There's only a minute and a half to go. And time is ticking away. The referee is probably going to blow. And he does. And it was a sensational second half from Hoz. And a fantastic performance in the end. And we have got revenge for that League Cup quarter-final defeat last season to Scarborough. We were excellent. The hoop says so. I agree. Fantastic stuff. So there we go. 3-0 against Scarborough. Puts us top of the table. And I can't see us losing it any time soon. I'm not going to lie to you. Sir Tom Finney Stadium. Where the hell is that? Where is that? That is in Whitby. Sir Tom Finney Stadium. I never knew that that was a stadium called. And one just took me away from what I was talking about. It really distracted me there. Anyway, on to the inbox. Just show you that we have completely confirmed it. 3 of secure victory at Gig Lane. And where do we come back next, ladies and gentlemen? That is the big question. 
We've got some big games coming up in this league. So, the likes of FC United, Blythe Spartans in the Bradford Park Avenue. We've got Sheffield, the oldest club in football ever. So, they'll be the teams that we're going to be coming back for and we're going to be playing for as well. So, I think what we'll do is we will play some games, get them under our belt, and we'll come back for the Sheffield game at the beginning of November. We're at the end of August right now. So, we'll get about 10 league games out of the way, come back for the game against Sheffield, and then after that, we'll bring you the games against FC United. Blythe Spartans and then we'll bring you the final games of the season coming into the running as well so we've got plenty of games to bring you plus we've got the FA Trophy and the FA Cup all coming up it's going to be an amazing season ladies and gentlemen I can't bloody wait well I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have if you have give it a like give it a thumbs up and do share it amongst family and friends on social media if you are a new viewer to my channel then thank you for popping by and having a good look at my videos but if you're not a subscriber just nip over to my page captain Betty Man fm on youtube and subscribe to my channel it would be much appreciated and also do share amongst everyone as well and i just want to say a massive thanks to everyone that has come and watched my videos it's a very weird time at the moment with the world and with the virus going around so if you're choosing my videos to just take 15 20 minutes out of your day to go back to a bit of normality then i appreciate it and thank you very very much a lot of love going around at the moment and if you are new or if you are a existing um, viewer to my channel and you just want to give out a bit of support and you just want to say, we're here, we're still watching it, just leave a little comment in the section below. I love the interaction when people do uh, comment in the section below on YouTube as well. If you want to keep up to date with everything that I'm up to, Captain Birdie Man FM, do go and follow me on Twitter at Captain Birdie Man FM. And also, massive shout out to the lads over at Passion for FM for their support this year. If you want to be part of our football manager community, then just go and click on the links in the description below this video video click on our discord channel go and follow us on twitter you know what to do ladies and gentlemen you know the drill i'll be back in another couple of days time for another episode of dead and bury the rise of afc bury bye bye